in the heart, Father, that we could receive, that we could grow, that we could understand, that we can comprehend your word. We know it's your word that's going to liberate our soul, liberate our minds and hearts. We know that by the instruction of your word, we are made into that vessel that you can use at whatever time. So, Father, I pray you bless us now. Move in us right now. Strengthen us right now. And we pray all of that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I pray you be moved and strengthened by the word of the Lord. We, ha- we took some time on Wednesday night. We, we, we were talking uh, here in verse 16. And we had just left off about being the same mind one toward another. Uh, verse 16 says, Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. We left off on that verse on Wednesday night. Tonight we are talking about verse 17, so let's just go ahead and get that up there. Verse 17, let's read it together. This is what it says. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. So let's read that again. So we don't pay back evil for evil, right? If you slide your finger down to verse 21, it says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Did you see that? Let's read some verses tonight that I believe are going to be a blessing. We're gonna, I'm going to read some stuff here. Uh, let's do this. If, 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 if you're here tonight, if you can get over to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. As soon as somebody gets it, why don't you stand up? You're going to help me read it tonight. If I can get somebody else from 1 Thessalonians 5.15, as soon as you get it, just stand up. I'm going to have you read it for me. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 21. As soon as you get it, stand up. I'll have you read that part, part with me. Proverbs 20, verse 22. If you can get a Proverbs 20, verse 22, stand up. And Proverbs 24, verses 29. I'll repeat those again. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. I think Pastor Josh, you're already there. I need 1 Thessalonians 5.15. Josh Jr., are you there? 1 Thessalonians 5.15? Proverbs, okay, 1 Thessalonians 5.15. Thess- Go ahead, Josh, stand up for me, my brother. We're going to read these. These are all cross-references, how we begin to comprehend and pull this verse together as we're going to try to exegete that verse tonight as best we can. If anybody can get to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 21, I'd appreciate that. I see you. I see you over there already, Alexis. You're up, already standing. Very good. And we've already got Proverbs 20, verse 22. And then how about Proverbs 24, Verse 29. Did y'all get that? Okay, so Pastor Josh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. We, 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 and let's, 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 I'm, I'm going to do verse 17, and I'm just going to write what I had in my notes. No paybacks. How many know what that means? Okay, no paybacks in the kingdom of heaven. Because we're going to overcome evil with what? Well, good. Pastor Josh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Can you read that for us aloud? Do not bring me to evil consideration, nor raise me to familiarity, but naturally wise, bless me, knowing that you are verily be called that you should inherit a blessing. Ah, Pastor Josh, say it again. So, so we're not we're going not evil for evil. Not rendering evil for or, or, or bad bad deed to bad deed, right? Or talk for talk, because how many know there's a lot of people here want the last word? Anybody in here got that, got that last word attitude? You got that last word spirit, where in every argument you've got to be the last word in that argument? God says, we don't need no more of that. Okay. We don't need to replace a bad deed with another bad deed, right? We don't want talk for talk. Pastor Josh, what else did it say? But contrary wise... Blessing. I, I like that, man. Woo. So, so on the contrary, we're to be blessers. I want you to write that in. You know, God's calling you to be a blesser. Not, uh, not a blessee, but a blessor. Right? So, so Pastor Josh, continue reading that verse. Knowing that you are there to be called. You are, you are, oh, look, look. I'm going to write this down. You, now write this in your notes. You are called to bless others. Can you get that? That's everybody. We're called to bless one another. Did y'all get that? 
Okay. So not bad deed for bad deed, not evil for evil, not talk for talk, not tit for tat. You know how that works. There's no paybacks in the kingdom of heaven. We're called to be blessers. Pastor Josh, go ahead. That you should inherit the blessing. And who do you think is going to bless you as a result of you blessing others? God will. God's going to bless you. 1 Thessalonians 5.15. Go ahead. Who had 1 Thessalonians 5? Brother Josh, go ahead. Share it. Who does not render evil to evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. That's right. So we're going to follow that which is good, both to the household of faith and outside of the house of God. Right? So we're called to bless others. Right? Now I'm going to add something. Inside the church and out. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Josh. Who had, who had 2 Corinthians 8.21? I'm going to show you these are foundational principles in Scripture. Alexis, did you have that? Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 21. Okay, now, now, now read it again and read, read, it, read it real slow for him. Providing honest things, not only in whose sight? God's sight, but who, who other sight? Okay, now I'm going to teach that here in just a minute. So we're called to not only provide things honest in the sight of God, but also in the sight of men. That's important. We're going to talk about that here for a minute. That's very good. Thank you, Alexis. Okay, uh, Proverbs 20, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 22. Did y'all see that? Don't say to yourself, I'm going to pay back the wrong that's been done to me. Okay? Because in this particular chapter, what we're going to find is this is the chapter of peace. The, fi the finality of, the, of Romans is, is the finality of us being at peace one with another. We're going to talk about that as we get into some of these, these verses a little later. Okay, so we got Proverbs 24, verse 29. That's right. So say not what? That I'm going to render to the man what now? Read it for me one more time. Right. Now watch this. How many know the golden rule in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Golden rule. Okay. How, 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 many, how many know what it is? You, 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 understand, you know what the golden rule is. Yeah. And we use it as a kind of a, you know, as a, you know the golden rule is kind of a, 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 a way of us identifying a particular verse or teaching that Christ gave. How many know what the golden rule is? And you could say it. Who, who knows the golden rule? We got two people that know it. Okay. All right, just draw it. Look like you know what? What, what does it say? Okay, so we do unto others as we would have people do unto us. So it's so the verse is not don't do to other people what you don't want done to you. So don't do to other people what you don't want them doing back to you. The golden rule says do to others. Do you see the do you see the significance there? I want you to teach what, what, what we're learning in our faith with God. God wants you to be a doer right. of unto others. Amen. And we need to get in the habit as a church family to do unto others mm -hmm. what we would want done to ourselves. Amen. Right? Because you know what happens when you get into a church or you get around people, when you come here and say, oh, ain't nobody said nothing good to me, nobody's my friend, and nobody, well, it's time for you to be a friend of somebody else. Right. And for the thing that you desire in your life, I pray that you would make it, a, make it a, a, a habit of doing to other people the very thing that you want done to yourself. Come on, somebody. These, these are teachings that are paramount. They're fundamental in our relationship with God. And I'm here saying that as a church, this is what we need to be occupied doing. Listen, what God wants us to do. You know, Harvest Temple Church, I cannot say completely that we're a church yet. Now, we assemble, and we're learning disciplines. But we're going to begin to see in the months as we begin to preoccupy our minds with Romans 12, the things that we should be doing. And how many know unity and, and, and brotherly kindness? The Bible says, the Scriptures teach, you know you pass from death unto life because you what? Love 
the brothers and sisters of your church. That's how the Bible knows that you're wa- now you're walking in a new dimension. Harvest Temple Church is kind of almost a church. We're getting there. We're getting close. But we've got work to do, right? And we're doing this work because I believe what God's going to do with our church, when he establishes our church and begins to move our church, because right now there's some beautiful things. God's going to be moving us out of Grand Prairie. Just letting you know. We're not going to be in Grand Prairie, right? God's already told me. We're not going to be in the city of Grand Prairie. But where, where, where God plants us, I don't want to ride on the moniker of our new building, church, if we're not a church. Amen. I'll call it something else. Amen. We, we just skip church. We won't even put it in the heading. I want us to be a true, bona fide, living, breathing organism, a church, a body Glory. that understands fundamentals in its faith. Amen. We need to begin to do we need to begin to do for one another. Amen. Right? So tonight, before you leave, how many today say, man, I wish somebody give me $20? <laughs> well, you got something to do tonight. <laughs> how many days say, I wish, I wish I had a friend? Raise your hand. You say, you wish you had a friend. Well, you've got something to do tonight. <laughs> Come on, somebody. That's what our faith is. And you know what? I want to love on the brothers and sisters. I, I, I want to love on my family. Come on, somebody. And this is what God is requiring of us. So we, we saw all those corresponding verses, verses 24 and 29. Let's do one last one. First Thessalonians. Now I'm going to teach you a new dimension. Now, now, now what I'm going to do with this verse is I know I'm going to step on somebody's toes tonight with this. one. So First Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to be a doing church, right? We're going to be a doing church. And when, 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 when we say that, we're saying that because we're going to do good one for another, right? Can we do that? No paybacks. How many know love keeps no record of wrongs? Right? Because you know how some people are. are Everything cool? Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. But it's really not cool. We got to get rid of all that. Right? We got to get rid of all that. You know, all the things you know in the church, a lot of people get offended quite easily. Right? And you need to take that little chip off your shoulder. Come on, somebody. You know, we get hurt because we have an expectation that's not being fulfilled. How many know that most of our hurts are because we had an expectation that wasn't met or satisfied in somebody or somewhere in a relationship? That's usually where our our offenses come, because we didn't get back what we thought we put in. But how many know that the, Pastor Josh read it, the reward's not going to come from men, because listen, Jesus taught it plainly. Listen, if what you're doing is so that you get a pat on your back, I'll pat your back right now. But it doesn't mean nothing in the kingdom of heaven. You know, the Bible says, if you only love those who love you, what reward have ye? And if you only salute them who salute you, what reward have ye? For even the heathen do that. Uh Even the godless people, even godless men and women today love their own children. So what distinction does our faith have with another? It's because we do one for another. And we're not looking for each other to pay me back. Since you, when I do for you, you don't have to pay me nothing back because I know my father's going to reward me. Because my blessing doesn't come from you. Amen. If you can pay me back for what I've done, mm. I've done nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Glory. Did y'all hear that? If you can pay me back for being your pastor, if, if, if the salary the church gives me is sufficient to pay me for what I'm doing, I'm not a very good pastor. Uh. Come on, somebody. Are y'all, hearing, are y'all hearing that? Yeah. How many got a job? And do they pay you what you're worth? Okay, well, good, then, then, then you'll probably be around your job for a while. Because now you have value. Right. How many know you got to have some value at your job? Because if they say, well, you know, we can really find somebody to do what you're doing. Right. You're probably not performing very well. Come on, Jessica, you just got your promotion. Right? So, so what happens is when you are exceeding what they're paying you, then they say this person has value worth to us. Come on. Are y'all hearing that? That's how we get promoted on earth. That's how we get promoted in the kingdom of God. Right? If everything I'm doing one for another, if there's recompense back to me sufficient to the labor that I've put in, I've done nothing. But God sees that which is done in private. And he rewards us openly. Y'all with me? Okay. So, so we, we got to be a doing church. We got to do good. Touch your name and say, I'm going to do good for you today. Look at your name and say, before we leave tonight, I don't care who you're sitting with. Even if you're sitting next to your wife, tell her tonight, I'm going to do good for you tonight. I'm going to bless you tonight. Look at your name and say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. 
Bless them for something. Just bless somebody for something. Say, I bless you for health tonight. Amen. Just touch them and say, I bless you in the name of Jesus, that your body be whole, that your mind be sound. You know, we got to get in the habit of doing that. Amen. Come on. We hear enough negative things throughout the week. Now, now, now I'm about to throw something at you. Are you ready? First Thessalonians 5. Now, I'm going to throw something at you. I'm going to throw something at you. And, and touch your neighbor and say, don't get mad. Don't get mad. Because this culture is not going to like what I'm about to read. Y'all going to hate this. Y'all ready? But it's the Bible. I got to teach it to you. Amen. Because my allegiance is not for you. It's to God. Yeah. I'm not going I'm not going to betray him to love you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now, look what it says here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'll just begin reading here verse 21. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Because that's what we're talking about now. Okay? Look what it says. Abstain. Verse 22 is what I'm trying to get to. What does it say? Abstain. From what? From all ah. Oh, wow. Alexis, do you remember the verse I gave you? 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Verse two. Uh, the, the scripture you just read, do you remember what it was? 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 21. Was that the verse I just gave you? 22. So, so Alexis, get ready. I want you to stand back up. I thought it was 2 Corinthians 8, 21. 8, 21, yeah. Okay, yeah. Alexis, I want you to read that again one more time for the family of God. So, so, so not only are we supposed to do that which is right, good, in the sight of God... But we're also, also provide that same goodness in the sight of men. Uh-huh. Now, now, when we get over to this verse 17, I want you to see that these verses are not just, the, the way the Bible is constructed is there are supporting scriptures that support one another. Uh-huh. And, they, and they give credence to that which we're trying to exegete. Romans chapter 12 says, and if we go back and look at it one more time, Romans 12 says, and I'm going to read this to you, it says, recompense to no man evil for evil, Provide things honest in the sight of all men. So in other words, and, and then when we get over to 1 Thessalonians 15, chapter 5, verse 22, what does it say? That we should even avoid what? The appearance. Now, now I, I'm going to throw something at you, and I know y'all going to think Pastor's tripping. But look, I know, I know a lot of, I'm just, I'm just going to give it for instance. And, and you've heard me say this. You will never catch me at Hooters. Okay, now, now I wasn't always in the church because I know what hooters are. And it's not an owl in a tree. Yeah, I'm going to be playing with somebody. Are y'all hear me? Because I don't want to give anybody the appearance that I'm cool with what's going on there. Because I'm not. I like root beer. But I don't drink IBC root beer. Anybody know why? Because a bottle looks like a beer bottle. And I don't want nobody saying, I saw your pastor rolling down the street in his Tahoe, knocking back some cold ones. I just don't want to give you that impression. I'm careful about what I wear. Because I don't want to give anybody the wrong impression. I'm careful about what I say. And I'm not saying it for you. I'm saying it for the world. So wherever I am, I'm going to give an example. A a few years ago, I'm at Walmart. And and we're there talking. And, and you know, the girl, she doesn't know me. I don't know her. I come through the line. I have a few items. I I give her a 20. And then she hands me back the change. and, and, And as I'm grabbing my bag, I say, hold on. That don't add up. It wasn't to my to my deficit. It was to my favor. Watch this. So I go back and I say, young lady, uh, listen, you, you gave me back like 2 or $3 too much. Mm-hmm. You know, because a lot of people say, oh, I got blessed today. <laughs> Man, I got me a blessing. Well, what happened to you? I went to Walmart. I gave him 20 They gave me back $10 in change. God's looking out for me. No, he's not. That's not how God looks out for people. And so I went back. Watch what she did. I went back and I said, young lady, I, I said, I know, I know you, listen, I think you gave me back the wrong change. And then she says, oh, oh, uh, she goes, by the way, I know who you are. And I said, you do? How do you know me? She goes, I've seen you on television. Mm, mm. Glory. 
Now, I don't know if this little girl was checking me, mm-hmm. but my integrity is not for sale for 2 or $3. Right. Come on you hear me? Because I'm going to be honest. Because the Bible says, if I can't be honest in the little thing, how am I going to be honest in greater things? And if God can't trust me with $2, how are you going to trust him with 200 or 2,000 or 200,000, 2 million? Listen, what I say to the church is what we do in here, listen, I've been saying this for a long time. This is a spiritual greenhouse. If I can't love my dad in the house of God, how am I going to love the people out? How am I going to be able to do anything out there? If I can't do something in the greenhouse, how am I going to go out there in the world and actually do something? This is a place where we practice all of that. Amen. Amongst the brethren where we learn to be honest and, and we practice integrity and we, and, and we tell the truth and we're honest and we're loving and we're, we're pouring ourselves into people so that when we practice it here, when we get out in the sight of men, we're already co- working in the things of God. Yes, you know, what did Jesus say? They're going to know you're my disciples. Why? Because you got your Bible? Listen, there's a lot of people, listen, when I leave my house, I live on Debbie Lane. There's a big church there on 360. Not everybody going to church there is a disciple. Just because the church has a lot of people doesn't mean, doesn't mean anything until people on the outside say, those people love each other. Then they're going to know you're my disciples. Not because you have a big church. And that's what I, I want to avoid that with Harvest Temple Church. I know on Sundays we're packed and people are here and, you know, all that, you know, okay, all right, big deal. Do we love each other? Amen. Are we blessing each other? Are, are, are we occupied in doing one for another? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. How many would love for somebody to treat you dinner tonight? Amen. Raise your hand if you wish somebody just treat you to dinner tonight. Uh-huh. Daniel, put your hand on. I treat you to dinner every, every Sunday. <laughs> I got you, son. <laughs> Raise your hand if you want somebody to treat you to dinner. Okay, well, you got something to do. Yeah. Well, you've got something to do. Yeah, now you, see, see, that's what, see, 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 anything that you would want done to you, Jesus says, do to somebody. So if you say, oh, man, I just wish somebody be my friend. Well, you got something to do. Uh Now you got to be friend to somebody else. Uh Right? That's how the church works. Because you know a lot of people going to come in, oh, I went to Harvest Temple and nobody said hi. Uh That's not how the kingdom works. I went there and nobody ever said, said hello or congratulated me or thanked me or, you know, did anything for me. That's not how it works, brothers and sisters. Uh-huh. We come here to do for each other. Yes. Amen. Somebody say glory. glory. Wow, right? So we got to avoid even the appearance yes. of evil. Amen. Now listen, I'm going to say something. We talked about this in our singles meeting. Sister Pam said something very good, and I'm just going to try to elaborate a little bit. I know that when people first get saved, your best clothes is your club clothes. <laughs> that happens at Harvest Temple. Not everybody's where you are, right? But we got a lot of older women in the church who should be giving that instruction to the younger ladies. And we got older men that should be talking to these young brothers at the church. Are y'all with me? You know, I, I, I can only invest in so many people you can only invest in so many people. But you know what? There's enough older men in here that there shouldn't be a young man in this church that doesn't know the ways of God. Amen. And there shouldn't be a young woman in this church that doesn't know what God loves and the heart of God because there's a, there's a godly woman in the house of God passing that instruction down. Amen. We got to be a doing church. Amen. Listen, because we're having to teach what it is, you know, nowadays, and, and y'all don't get me wrong here. Listen, I know when we all come to church, you know, we come, you know, if you've been in the world, you, you brought in a lot of baggage. How many say hallelujah? hallelujah? Don't be acting all sanctified now. Come on, get real with me. Amen. You come into church, and you are in the world, and in the world, you pick up a lot of stuff. Right. And, then, and then when you get here, the pastor, what am I doing? Uh, what, you know, the Holy Spirit's doing. What are we doing? We're trying to chop that stuff off of you. Yeah. We're trying to trim you down, make you ready for the race. Because I mean, no, you can't run the race heavy. Right. You, you got to strip down to run this race. Right. You got to be light. You got to be fleet-footed. And we got we to gotta get ready. Any weight that would, would beset us, right. that, w- that would tie up our feet, that keep us from running swiftly, Amen. right? So we got to get rid of ideas. We got to get our emotions in check. We got to get our doctrine right. We got to understand God. We got to begin to have a pursuit of God. A lot of things begin to happen and transpire in that time. And so there are things, ideas that you're bringing in that are contrary to God that I hope that while you're at Harvest Temple or while you're learning or being instructed, that you're getting rid of some of these things, right? right. 
But some things, some things somebody needs to plainly tell you. Uh-huh. That, bla- that V-neck blouse you got is a little bit too much V. Brother, them designer jeans you got, they're a little too designer for you. Right? You know, because nowadays they don't, you know, back in my day, we used to say it was tight. Today they say it's form-fitting. And my, my little sister, how many know my little sister Margo? My little my sister Margo's got a saying. How many know Margo's saying, my little sister Margo? This is her saying. She says that if she can stretch it, she can fit it. I say, Margo, that's not, that, that didn't come from the Holy Ghost. Who, whoever... First of all, I don't want to see you in everything. First of all. Come on, as your brother. Come on. But secondly, I think there's things, there's, you know, the Bible says, let our moderation be known unto all men. Let our moderation be known. Right? How many know it's good to be moderate? Right? Moderation. Isn't that a key word for our generation? Moderation. No, nobody, nobody, you're saying, well, what is, what is moderation mean? You, you need a dictionary. <laughs> you need a dictionary. Moderation isn't too left, isn't too right. right. We're learning how to balance ourselves. Right. Come on, somebody. Man, that's, that's a good thought for somebody, right? So listen, there's things that we, you know, listen, th- th- there are things, even in our culture, I'm telling our kids, even Apostle Paul said, you know, there's a lot of things that are permissive, permissible, but they're not beneficial. Yeah. Right? Right? I meet, I meet more and more people these days that are trying to tell, uh, uh, Pastor, what's wrong with one glass of wine? Never before have I seen a generation that wants to know how, how close can they get to death without actually dying. Do y'all understand that? Look, you show me one person that can drink one glass of wine, I'll show you 10,000 drunks. Odds are that if you start playing around with stuff, is going to snare you. I'm trying to get rid of stuff. I'm not trying to get stuff. I'm not trying to get a habit. I'm trying to break habits. Uh-huh. Right? Well, Pastor, what's wrong with, with, with smoking a cigarette? Well, you know, brother, will I go to hell for it? You know, I, I don't want to be the judge of that. But do you really need nicotine to calm your nerves? I got prayer instead. Amen. I know how to pray. I don't, my nerve, when I get, I pray. Come on, somebody. What I'm saying is, you know, why do we want, why do we want to look like the world? Huh? Why do we want to look like them? Why, why do I want to look like I belong to them? I want to look like I belong to God. Come on, somebody. So listen, you, you know, if you drink a glass of wine, you go going to hell. You know, brother, sister, probably not. But keep playing. Just keep playing around and see what happens. You're opening yourself up. To not, you know, and you know what else I tell people? You know what the scriptures teach? Man, the Lord's got me going here. The scriptures teach me that I, I should never be a stumbling block. I'm not my own. I was bought with the price. You, you, you know, I, I, was, I shared this testimony not too long ago. There were some very prominent ministers in this city who, 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 are, who are friends of mine who Pastor Josh and I have counseled with them about their public intoxication. And, and it wasn't too long, you know, that we engaged this argument when I had a friend, a family that, that took me out to Zio's, in, uh, uh, Zio, Zio's, and the Italian restaurant. You know what I'm talking about? What is it called? Zio's, right? It was all right, you know. <laughs> While I'm eating there, I see one of them. And I, you know, hey, what's going on, Pastor? Hey, how you doing? He waved back at me. And so while, while we were there just talking before we get, my, my friend uh, uh, in the Lord got up. He said, I'm going to go wash my hands before I eat. So when he went and came back, I noticed he was a little disturbed. I said, man, are you all right? He says, uh, is, is that your friend? I said, yeah, it's a pastor friend. He, he passed right in Grand Prairie. And I, I told him where his church was. He says, man, he's drunk. I can't believe that a pastor, you know, so he was offended by that. That somebody who calls himself a man of God would be somewhere intoxicated. Listen, church, do you understand that being a stump, you know, we're responsible to never be a stumbling block. Even to these young people, listen, young people, I don't never want you to get a tattoo on your body. And I know that a lot of your generation, man, y'all would sleeve yourselves and put all kinds of tattoos. But I'm here to tell you, you're not going to look more godly. You're going to look more worldly. 
Right. Gary, am I saying something? We've talked about this, right? We've talked about it. You don't mind me sharing, do you? Yeah, Gary, Gary came to me and said, Pastor, you know, I, I, you know, my boss likes my work. He says, I'm a good worker. They want to promote me. The only problem is the next level of management says I have too many tattoos. Now, I would take them off, but they said if I took them off, they'd look like burns. I don't want to scar myself up, and I don't have the money to pay for it. Your generation, your generation is saying anything's cool. Yeah. Everything's open. God is love. Listen, God will always be love. The question isn't God's love to us. It's our love to him. God, God's love will always be the same. Young, young, young people, listen. God will love you to the apex. You can't even measure the love of God. The ocean's too wide, too deep. The question is how much do you love God? That's the question. God's love has never been in question nowadays. The question is how much do we love him back? Listen, I don't ever want to put something on my body. That's going to be a stumbling block to another brother or sister in the, in the Lord. Come on, somebody. I don't ever want to be in a restaurant or in a place where my activity, my attendance is, 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 is co-laboring with something that is demonic or, or worldly. Come on, somebody. Y'all got to hear that. I take that stuff very serious. Long before I was a pastor, I believed that. Come on, somebody. And I know that when we're from the world, Gary, you know how that is. We talked about that. G Gary, Gary's from the street. And when you're banging, that's what you do. And when you're rolling with the boys and you're gang banging and, and rolling hard and you're thugging, you know, that's how it is. But then when you meet the Lord, yeah, you know, you know how it is, Gary. And I'm, you, you know, praise God for Brother Gary. You know, he, know, he understands that now. He could be a help to some of these young people who think all that stuff, you know, all that street stuff and all that thugging stuff is, for, you know, is, how, is a way to go. We know it's not the way to go. Uh -huh. And I don't ever want to be a stumbling block to anybody in the church. And that's why the Bible says, listen, if I offend somebody, watch this. If I, if I offend you and I know I've offended you, I can't even offer up a sacrifice to God. My arms are dead. The, Jesus said, listen, put your arms down and go make right with your brother before you offer anything to God. Yeah. Because God is about unity. Uh -huh. Amen. We are supposed to maintain a bond of peace. Uh -huh. yeah. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. we're, we're, we're in such a self-centered culture of believers. Uh -huh. That's right. uh -huh. And listen, what you do in your house reflects on me too. Uh -huh. Let me say that again. What you're doing, what you think you're private, it reflects on me too. And your friends become my friends. Yeah, I'm saying something, man. You know, I tell, I tell my kids, listen, whoever your friends with and whoever you bring in my house, you better know they can co-labor with me. And when you start thinking about somebody, where's Megan then? Oh, that's good. She's working. Okay. I said, baby, you know, whatever you're doing, whoever you, whoever you, you know, you know how Judge, Julie, Judge Judy says, if you hit your trailer to a loser, thank you, Pastor Josh. We watch Judge Judy, you know. We, if you hit your trailer to a loser, and guess what? You're going to make your whole family part of that. Come on. That, that's why I don't, you know, I don't befriend myself with just anybody. Now, I'm friendly to everyone, but my sphere is very small. Yeah. I, I love, I, 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 let, I do whatever God will have me do at any time. I, I, I am available to God 24-7. But friendships become a very small circle because I'm careful. You should be too. The Bible says we should guard our affections. Man, that's a good word. All right, do y'all get that? Come on, somebody. Touch your neighbor. Say, don't look like a thug. Touch Brother Gary back there for me, Brother John. No, Brother Gary, Brother Gary, you're doing a good job. I love you, Brother Gary. That's my man right there. And I love his little boy, JT, man. That's my partner right there. He's my partner in the Lord, little JT. Come on, somebody. Amen. Okay, look, let, let, all right, let's, let's, let's do this. I, I, I'll do the next verse next, next, next on Wednesday. Can we read it together before we leave? Yes. Let me just read this, this verse to give you some food for thought. You ready? Romans chapter 12. And you're going to like verse 18. If it be possible, 
Now, I like the way that starts off. If it be possible, and we're going to talk about this on Wednesday. If it be possible, get along with people. <laughs> Did y'all see that? Because how many know that may not always be possible? Raise your hand today if you know that, that in all that we do, it may not be possible to be at peace with some people. I, I, everybody needs to raise your hand to that. I want you to get that. Because I'm telling you, if you live in this world, there are going to be some situations where peace cannot be maintained. So the Bible's telling you, if it be possible. So we know it's not saying at all times, because it may not be possible. Look what it says. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. We're going to talk about that, because I want to give you some knowledge on that on Wednesday night. How many can say amen to that? Okay, so we covered some good stuff. Did you get enough? Did you get enough? Look, look, and you got an assignment. All the people that said they wanted somebody to treat them to dinner. And you know who you are because you raised your hand, even my son. He don't got no money to treat me tonight, I don't think. He spent all his money at camp. You still got a few bucks, Neil? Oh, you put some aside. Okay, all right. Man, you had to give me at least an ice cream cone or something. Come on. At Brahms or something, right? If, if, if I, want, I want you tonight to say, you know what, I'm going to start doing for people. I'm going to start doing for people the very thing that I would want done to myself, right? How many ladies say, I wish my husband would tell me he loved me? You got something to do tonight. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Husbands. How, would, uh, how many husbands here say, I wish my wife would make me a cake? There ain't no hands going up. All the guys are smart now. I don't know. Don't have any need. <laughs> Getting smart on us. We want to do one for another. Let's love on each other, okay? Let's love on each other. All right. We'll pick this back up. We only got one verse tonight, but sometimes it takes that long to do it. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Pastor Josh, we got any, any announcement thing I need to say before we dismiss? Tonight, immediately following tonight. Now, remember that Vacation Bible School does not start tomorrow. It starts a week from tomorrow. So not, th not tomorrow, Monday, a week from Monday starts our Vacation Bible School. But we want everybody who's being part of that to stay tonight. Is that correct? Am I hearing that correctly, Pastor Josh? So tonight, if you have uh, anything to do with Vacation Bible School or being part of, of the volunteerism, or, or the help that you're giving in that department, they're meeting tonight, immediately following service. Was that the only thing, Pastor Josh? Is that all we had? Okay. Uh, five, four, five dollars. See, Pastor Josh is going to turn a profit on that, on that hummingbird cake. That's cool. He bought it for 50, going to make 75. <laughs> all right. So how, how many would like a slice of cake tonight? Just go to Pastor Josh's office and put a sad look on your face. See if he'll do something for you. Be a small slice. Going to be a sample, Pastor Josh? Going to be a little sample? <laughs> look at my wife already getting in. A, I don't know what she's doing over with that. 